I'll have a lot well, more if you want, uh, I can go ahead and introduce what the male supremacy movement oh, is. So speaking of yes. Holly and yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a really good segue. Yeah, so we could talk about <laughs> some of that. Sure. Um, okay. Well, so I know um, I have brought it up before, and. Uh, a lot of people aren't really aware of it. It's uh, the male supremacy movement is something that's been really frustrating because it doesn't get much attention. And let me tell you, this is a huge deal and it's violent. And every once in a while, you'll hear about an incel, and you're like, well, "What? What a loser!" But he's not alone. So um, I was just showing Darren about this TikTok trend earlier, where they had this uh, music like a Frank Ocean song, and then guys would have like them sitting in front of the camera trying to look like flirty or whatever, and then the text would read, um, what if I took you on a date, blah, 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 I do something violent to you, and then you die is the punchline. Um, and it's all like domestic violence. I showed him, like, imagine oh. I took you on a date and then stabbed you with my fork to death. Or imagine if I took oh. you on, if I, imagine if I took you on a skydiving date and I pushed you out of the push you out of the plane without a parachute. And then you died. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. And oh they're, my yes. Gosh. And so they're calling it a joke. And um, here's the thing. It's it might not. be to them. Yeah. It might actually be a joke to them because the male supremacy movement is totally hinged on violence towards women. They think it's hilarious. They talk about it in their, in their um, groups. They have these chats are like, uh, they, these stories they write. I mean, they're horrifying. And then some of them do it. So, um, I wanted to, let's go ahead, and a lot of it can be called the Manosphere, and um, Gab, 8chan, 4chan, were huge uh, um, social media places uh, that brought these people together. So, the movement technically started in the 70s. I remember. I, I remember. Yes. Yeah. So, you may remember this, um, what is it called, the... Um, the men's liberation movement in the yes. 70s. Oh, yes. But the men's liberation movement embraced female liberation and critiqued social gender roles. They fought against, they fought for the right uh, for stay at home dads. They fought it against men being removed from the home and being excluded from emotional intimacy and forced men to be protectors and providers. They wanted the human experience for the full life of emotional fulfillment. Super in line with feminism, right? And they worked side by side. But after a while, it somehow began morphing into angry white men who began fully embracing this sociological masculine gender role. And um, especially during the 80s and 90s, um, th what they decided was it's women's fault. It's women's fault that they aren't getting their way. It's women's fault that they stopped doing what men told them. And they realized they didn't get their way constantly anymore and that Entitlement was waxing, so they decided they needed to get back to oppressing women. So it's the old "you made me do it." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like if you won't stay in your lane, then we will put you there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in the manosphere, these guys—they have heroes. Um, I do you remember oh. Elliot Rogers, the Buena Vista shooter? No. no okay. I well, don't. he um, he killed some college men and women and was because um, women were denying him sex and then the chads in society were keeping him from getting it. So he killed both of what he thought. And he wrote this manifesto that these guys, especially incels, just like hero worship. And they're like, yes, we should have violence against women. Um, they also have um, Rouge V., um, from Return of the Kings, and um, I have some quotes here that um, I would like <laughs> for you to read. Um, where is his quote? Uh, just so you oh. know, um, back back when I was a young and I remember one guy that was the voice of uh, voice and face for them. He had a really long beard and he wore a uh, kilt. I, I can't remember his name, but wow, well, I do not remember. I just so the. That Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, go ahead. No, once they came out with, you know, Playgirl, and, you know, it, that was the equality, and that was what, you know, Burt Reynolds, yeah. like there was anything there anyway. But, um, you know, that was starting the equality. I mean, you know. And yeah. then, of course, uh, Gloria Steinem's um, <laughs> movement. Thank goodness she came out She with actually, one of the guys who 
move high, Harry Crouch was working side by side with her when he abandoned it and went straight men's rights movement. Yeah, uh, she came across some really crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she, I mean, he seemed supportive at the time, but you know, then the more they thought about it, they're like, yeah, but we used to be able to tell women what to do. Like, mm -hmm. why would we stop that? Yeah. Um, so I'll get to the quote in just a second. I thought next I'll just mention some of the major players and we'll do segments coming up about each of these individually because they all have their own thing to unpack. So there is the National Coalition for Men. They are largely focused on battling women, trying to gain equality in workplaces. Um, what they did is like some women conference that they were trying to bring women to come and network and help women build confidence in the workplace and meet people and they wanted to go to this women's only event they're like you can't so they sued them and um on the basis of discrimination because they're men and that's basically what they do and they have ruined businesses and taken all their money because they are little bitches and um they also have a website that literally outs rape accusers of campus sexual assault if the campus dismisses it or doesn't do anything. So oh, wow. so they put their Are images out there kidding? and their names and they yep yeah, oh. they make them straight up targets. Um let's see there's another group called the PUAs which stands for pickup artists. Um they enjoy the game of luring women into sleeping with them while also degrading them the whole time. These guys truly hate women and don't care whatever means it takes to get the sex that they feel they're entitled to out of them. Um, you may have heard of negging. Are you familiar with that term? It sounds familiar, but I don't. Familiar. Yeah, but it doesn't. It's the uh, practice of insulting or undermining someone in the belief that diminished self-confidence and will make them more receptive to sexual advances. So basically, it's like a psychological game that, you know, they'll do something like, that shirt's okay, but your friends is prettier. But you're the target because they want you to fight for the attention and to like be like, well, why would you put me down or yes. something like that. Um, and then there are the Return of Kings, um, who Rouge V is the is an advocate for forceful and predatory behavior because women are only worthy of sexual pleasure and fertility. He's literally a pro-rape law advocate and thinks that women shouldn't be allowed to vote. Um, very much enjoys the Taliban's set up with women. Um, by the way, by the way, there was that one Republican rep representative, I think, who said that his daughter should just lie there and take it if she gets yeah. raped. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh enjoy it. And Might as well enjoy it. Father. Oh yeah. my God. Oh yeah. You, I, yeah. I can bring a whole quote of politicians. Uh. I'll bring. I'll just bring one of those one day. Um, oh, uh, by the way, Rush V is also anti-Semitic, and um, that's oh. why he gets along so well with the white supremacy movement. Yeah. So these movements are meshing together. Yes. Um, but only the white supremacists get talked about. But they, they they're very yeah. much in mm -hmm. line. Um, MRAs, men's right activists, um, while they are milder on their beliefs against women, they are more politically powerful. So they can they get things done. Um, they do believe that, just like all other male supremacists, that women are intellectually and physically inferior. Um, even though everyone knows men have like a low pay tolerance. Come on, yeah. really? Physic? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can't take it. Um, and the father's right movement also falls under them. Um, and then there, there's uh, the incels are particularly violent. Incel means involuntary celibate. And so just like Elliot Roger I mentioned before, um, these guys are just driven by hate. Um, they think that you should get sex out of women also violently any way they can. Um, and they think coercion is a great way um their anger is the one that most call uh, has yeah and they were teenagers um has the most calls for violence um so a lot of you know a lot of these like male shooters mm -hmm. they were in cells uh, most of those school shooters in cells i mean they are a strong that they, they fantasize it these are the people who when you get on their website like those jokes right um that that's that's their humor but then they also they're also mad at chads so they're mad at other oh, men yeah. they're they're mad at the whole system um is there a demographic 
Um, yeah, so oh. most male supremacy movement is largely comprised of younger white men, mm-hmm. um, you know, and they've continued recruiting. So um, it's like up to Gen X, um, maybe, um, like that's the early side, but okay. I mean, w- we're talking 13 year olds getting recruited into it now. I mean, at this point, it's online, it's organized, and they have a movement. That's why it's called a oh, movement. Yes. Um, there is MIGTO, uh, that's men going their own way, and they present themselves as male separatists and have chosen to remove themselves from the negative influence of women entirely, except they still won't leave us alone. So it's not really true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they they got to constantly scream at women yeah. and seek us out to tell us terrible things about us. Um, and the red pillars, um, that's just anybody who um, admits to being, who thinks that, Feminism is a conspiracy theory, and we're somehow a matriarchal society. And all of these morons, like, somehow insist that women have power and that they have to take it back. Um, yeah. Which so, is still why we aren't paid as much as men are. Yeah. And but get the jobs they'll tell you the that's men. not because of sex, though. Yeah. That's yeah. because yeah. Of, that's because we're yeah. we told you you're incompetent. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's kind of funny is how so many of their like beliefs are so um, contradictory. Like they think women are incompetent, but also conniving and manipulative, um, and that we yeah. use feminism to oppress men. Um, but. While other, uh, so, um, sorry, my notes are kind of funky. That's all right. Um, so i just going to read this part. Uh, this is from Southern Poverty Law Center. So many of the core tenets of male supremacist ideologies are contradictory. Adherents maintain that women are incompetent, yet conniving and manipul- manipulative. Some argue that women use feminism to oppress men, while other male supremacists seek to maintain and exploit existing structural gender e- inequality. Many male supremacists reduce women to the reproductive function, simultaneously shaming women for having sex while believing that sex is something women owe men or that should even be coerced out of them. And they are united by the common goal of explicitly and implicitly oppressing women and anyone whose gender diverges from rigid heteronormative archetypes, male supremacist tenants also undergird much of the far right. Um, and a lot of that belief is also anti-liberalism. They basically think liberalism is a very feminine um, thing. So I do have a couple of quotes. Um, if you would like to read this one, this one at the bottom is oh, from Matt Forney. Okay. Um, and he's a Return of the Kings. And it goes on the back page. Um, it should. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does it? Yeah. yeah it, I just end, wanted to double check. Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. okay. It ends with that C dash dash. Okay. Okay. Matt Fournay, Return of Kings. No functioning, healthy society would allow Pulse, or the kinds of men who frequented it, to exist. No healthy society would mourn their passing. Indeed, depending on your perspective, Mateen was just taking out the trash, eliminating societal parasites via natural selection. When a man and a woman are attracted to one another, they are seeing the continuation of their tribe and the formation of the next generation. Babies are produced by heterosexual, the one most... Oh, no. No. By 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 heterosexuals. Yeah, by heterosexual relationships and all homo relationships ever produce is cum. That is... Yeah, it stopped Uh, printing on the back pages. Uh, oh. So sorry about that. that. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> so uh, I'm curious. So they believe in marriage. Uh, yeah. So that they can. Well, this is Return of Kings. So their okay. ideologies, there's a little bit that will be different and we'll we'll go into it. But um, yeah, so the Return of Kings believe in this heteronormative, this rigid thing and that women should be oppressed. Mm-hmm. You know, kings in the home. Um, that's what they're wanting to return to and so they are also anybody who's not that is bad for humanity like genocide bad like that's what you know so that's why Mateen who you mentioned yes. that's the person who killed everybody at the Pulse nightclub do you remember the Pulse nightclub oh shooting yes. Yes. yes we don't remember his name they do they mm-hmm. love these people they worship them they <sighs> like once you go violent 
you know, like that that brings you a lot of popularity. Um, I'll read one from. Um, okay, so this is from Roosh V, who's also a Return of the King. Okay. This he says, make rape legal if done on private property. I propose that we make the violent taking of a woman not punishable by law when done off public grounds. If rape becomes legal under my proposal, a girl will protect her body in the same manner that she protects her purse and smartphone. After several months of advertising this law throughout the land, rape would be virtually eliminated on the first date as it is applied. So that's actual political movement. So as long as it's at home, it's okay. Yeah, if they come yeah. to your house, yeah, um, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have this little poem <laughs> from an incel that, uh, Darren, do you want to come read this? Because I can't okay. uh, <laughs> move everything. <laughs> I think you're going to really enjoy this. Um, <laughs> sorry to make you move. That's no, okay. Okay, which one? Okay, there's the poem. Okay. You much, uh, this is by LB. Do you need it bigger? No. You looked much prettier with long hair. You mu looked much prettier with long hair. Don't give me that. Show me a smile. It's better to be natural. Oh, look, at your arms are so hairy, hairier than mine. Not not rowdy or older than myself, but definitely confident and intelligent and maybe even quirky as long as she's thin and kind because I don't like fat girls. How do you find your dream woman? Where to find your dream woman on... Oh, that's something else. Uh, yeah. No, that's part of it. Uh, uh, where to find your dream woman online free? I think I'm still in love with Grace, but she ignores and blanks and shuns me, even after I started so much, yet she doesn't even seem to care. Hey, I'm very drunk. I see you, the little green dot next to your name, ha ha, uh, night then, I guess. Oh my god. Insane. Uh, Insane. <laughs> yeah. This was a very popular poem because they all relate to it. And mm -hmm. you see how just like all over the place it is? Oh yeah. So they have these these little islands of thoughts and then they just like especially the incels, they're yes, just so. so full of anger they just bleh, like word vomit on things. Well they just can't think for themselves. No. I mean and no. to me that is a mental illness, you know? Yeah. Um, and I have one more, and then I think um, if y'all have any questions, but otherwise I just kind of wanted to get the topic going. So I'm going to read this um, incel uh, post. It says, I'm a 30-year-old virgin, and I think I'm forced to hate women. I mean, I don't want to hate women, but I feel as if I have no choice. Dating to me is this game that seems designed to make me fail. Why is that? Is it because I work a minimum wage job? Because I live with my mom? Because I don't have a car? I don't understand it. It's like I'm being mocked for my virginity and incompetence when it's none of it's my fault. There's a show called Power on Stars that's about a drug dealer in New York City. My mother watches it all the time and I simply take a glance at it from time to time. Well, the show is loaded with sex scenes, lots of them. And to me, whenever I watch it, it's like the show is mocking me. Like it's saying that I will never have this that I have to pay a cunt if I want to obtain sex, oh. and that the majority of people can have it for free. That makes me incredibly angry and would love nothing more than to rip out the show's throat, but I can't. So now I'm stuck here watching something I can't have and wondering why I haven't killed myself yet. Almost forgot to add that I'm black, but I hate black people because of what they did to me in the past. So just go ahead and throw in all the hatred he has there. Yeah. I forgot oh, that bottom nice. part of the quote. But yeah, all, you know, 30 years old, like that's where a lot of them are. I would say the most active in the group are 16 to 30. Um, but yeah, so the male supremacy movement. They know is, how to pick that age. Yeah. Just absolutely. They know how to, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you, um, I was. I started listening to this story about a guy who was friends with the Toronto guy who ran over 11 people, and they went to school together. And uh, I just started listening to. It. It's really interesting how very divergent he went. Like he would find out later that he was writing, you know, things like 
some of the most horrible things, which I didn't bring today because we're easing in. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and also, I'd rather try to keep it light because it, but it's really dark, and at some point, people have got to see some of these things. Um, and he was just like sick to his stomach to find out his roommate was just writing these violent call pieces to murder and hate of women, especially like sitting in the same room with him. Like, hey, bro, what's up? And he's like over here, like, I'm going to kill women. They should die. I want to feel their head squash under the wheels of my car. Stuff like that. Like, uh. nuts. So, yeah. I think that's that's a heavy topic. That's probably enough of it for now. Or? It's oh. so very scary for yeah. parents um, I can't and, and families. You know, that's yeah um, of the boys. I, and I will say boys. It is. These, I mean, these is a male supremacy these, movement. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just. I mean, there are, you know, there are women who will be like, oh, I agree the women should be in the home or whatever, like women from religious backgrounds and whatever, like who will subjugate themselves. But I don't think that they think about or realize like the violent fixations and ideologies behind it. Mm hmm. Um, well, uh, I, I'm going to like paraphrase uh, somebody we know, Mr. Flabby Hoffman. Mm -hmm. uh, he is of the idea that um, we should, instead of making prostitution illegal, make it not only legal but free, so some of these nut jobs can actually get some. <laughs> See, and that's the thing. And, they all and then they calm down. And then calm down. All and they want to talk about is that these guys this, need sexual release. Yeah. yeah. No, you don't. No. <laughs> you're, yeah. you, we're in a culture that is telling you that. Yeah. You are surrounded by men, and you all are making fun of each other on whether or not you're having sex. It's the ma whole macho, uh, quien es más macho. You don't thing. need yeah. sex. And it's, it's the uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah. You know. It's yeah. all Eve's fault. Right. And that's like the second Genesis story. Yeah. <laughs> it's in contradiction with the first one, with Lilith. Yeah. So, I, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, basically, um, it is... It, they want slave wives. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah. And, you know, and, and seriously, a lot of them, they sit around and think about, well, how can we get all men laid? Like, why? Why do we have to think, why not we just make men better people, and then we'll have sex with them? There you go. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you could just improve, like, the, the culture around this and your personality, and I know that you think violent thoughts about women, why would I yeah, want to have exactly. sex with you? Right, exactly. If you're putting it out and there in the urban... the C word. I hate that word. Oh, yeah. I, Sorry, I, I should have... No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. No, I just, personally, I have always yeah. hated it. I just think it's a disgusting oh, so I have a lot of British so and Australian have, friends, so... Yeah. yeah. No, no. So you I haven't understand. seen Afterlife. <laughs> No, but I do. Yeah, you know, I know. He used, Ricky Gervais uses that word a lot in yeah. the series. Yeah. Okay. One of the things I was thinking when you brought it up, like, I wanna, I wanna find something from moms, like when they find out. But like, why? So, I don't, I have, I don't recall <laughs> reading anything about no, ma'am. Why, so many families don't seem to see this happening, yeah. and I think a large part of it, you know, just off the top, is that this doesn't get talked about enough. This doesn't get no, talked, doesn't. The, the language isn't yeah. out there. But like, Rouge V, when I was here in, back in 2015, when I was in grad school, in 2015, he tried to hold pro-rape rallies in multiple locations. Oh. And yeah, yeah, well, the, <laughs> yeah, well, those of us who have been watchdogs for it, like people were invaded, kept finding it, and like they'd have these secret handshakes, you'd meet someone, and then they'd take you somewhere, and we it just kept getting infiltrated and so they couldn't those do it because they felt unsafe they felt unsafe so we can't does, does the secret uh, handshake have anything to do with rubbing up a finger in somebody's palm probably probably don't waste yeah, Reese is laughing with us. Yeah, yeah, she 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 gets excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Um, there is there is so much to this. Like, I'll, I'll bring on pieces here, but I think I'm gonna put together like a whole like video to share. Um, people on my TikTok have been wanting to hear more about it too. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I just I think it's very important, super important. 
I know, and I even skipped some stuff. I know I have, but but Why it is the schools covering this the because boys will be boys. Well, that's true. Yeah, but it does need to be. You know, that's what a counselor is for to make yeah. sure that the yeah. parents know what's going on and the and the kids. But well, of course, but, but the thing is, like some parents that don't want. But the counselors. schools aren't paying. Yeah, the schools aren't doing anything already. They have warning yeah. signs for these school shooters and still not stopping it. Um, and the school shooters aren't usually alone. They have friends. Oh, of course. They have friends. Right. And right. their friends think the same things. They And, and online, they probably have like a whole audience of people like, oh, absolutely. kill those people. Yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> she know. We go um, to jazz night, and when everyone claps and stuff, and yeah. like cheers in between songs, she knows that's when we cheer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, that's it for the segment, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I was just, you know, I, I'll just I know, close I know. saying there that yeah. they all advocate for the subjugation of women, yeah. and they aren't splitting hairs. It's not being misinterpreted by me or anyone. They mean every word kind they say. Yeah. They've shown us time and time again they are terrorists because they do have a political agenda. Mm -hmm. They are just terrorists. Um, and how do we get to modern violence on women? Through children and fathers, just like QAnon. What is the yeah. movement uh, that was called during the the nineties uh, when the men would the religious, but they were wanted to be or, or wanted to be good dads, and so they um, why, why can I not think of that? Uh, and when was it the nineties? Yeah, and um, they they were religious, but they went because they wanted to be good fathers, and so they would find they all gathered together at the. Um, at the Capitol, I wish I could remember. Sorry, I, I can't remember the. Yeah. The, but uh, but it was I, so I wonderful. I remember yeah, it, but yeah. I don't remember the name. name. Yeah. yeah, and it was just so wonderful because these men truly, truly wanted to um, help one another and learn things. Yeah, so the, in the early movement. Families. And now I don't know what yeah. happened to that group. Well, what happened is they didn't get their way right away, which men are kind of generally used to. And so when that didn't happen, well, it must be one of fault. Yeah. I think in some instances, yes, I think you're right. In some instances, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and some of them out there, some of the men's right activists, like, they they do bring up good points. Uh, you know, uh, su young boy suicide is huge. But the problem is the culture that, like, the men's right activists create puts the pressure on these kids. Mm -hmm. Like they are their own problem. You know, they are creating this atmosphere um, with violent patriarchy yes. that leads these kids, like some of them are very sensitive. Like boys are sensitive, boys have feelings and they deserve to be able to like cry in public too. And it's, it's really sad. And it's really sad to see them go from, you know, probably sensitive young boys into violently angry boys who feel like they're owed sex and the world and are being denied everything. Promise keepers. Promise, promise keepers. keepers. That's it. Promise keepers. I'm going to look that up. And then I think the promise keepers ended up going in a different direction. Yeah, they probably and didn't get the support that they wanted to get, and yes, it did go into it. Did, it did yeah, go. because they, they, were, they were actually tied to January 6th, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because it started in um, Colorado. Yeah, mm -hmm. Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the problem, yeah, the promise keepers were tied to a lot of things that happened during the Trump, include, you know, Trump years, no, including he's, January 6th. Who's that? So, yeah. Uh, do y'all know who Dixie Normus is? Oh, please. Somebody just asked me if I've ever worked with Dixie Normus. No, no, stop saying that. That. Oh. You I got me good. Name. I didn't use the last name. Normous. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. That's so silly. That's so juvenile. You just feed into it. Oh. Oh. Of course, of course, the gay man's the first one to get it. 
<laughs> what? Yeah, I know. Somebody, he, he wrote it to me twice. He was like, hello. And I, I'm thinking, oh, is it some other activist? Like, no. No, <laughs> it's not. It's a joke. Yeah. It's Bar Simpson over here. Yeah. 